Hey everybody, hello and welcome to another one of my Tyranid 6th edition videos. Yay! Uh, due to the number of subscribers I've gotten, I've, I've moved to a larger room for your viewing pleasure. Uh, this, this video is going to be on the Death Leaper, my personal favorite HQ. First, to give you a list of the things you need to know about the Death Leaper. Know about Camelic Skin. Know about Pheromone Trail. Know about It's After Me. And most importantly, know about where is it? Or as I like to call it, where the F is it? Um, Camelic Skin basically means does not deviate if you deep strike it. Very useful. Pheromone Trail, basically homering beacon. Teleport homing beacon. Uh, any unit can sit up within six inches of it from deep strike without deviation. And when you consider things like terror from below attacks with the Moloch and subterranean assault with the Turvagon and, of course, descending spore mine clusters, this is very, very useful. Next is It's After Me. The Tyranids already tend to make life difficult for psychers, especially Grey Knights. This is just an extra little owie to place on them, an extra little headache to give to people on the other side. It's After Me subtracts an extra D3 leadership from an individual character unit in the opponent's army of your choice. The Death Leaper doesn't even have to be on the table. It just needs to be alive. You could keep it in reserve for some reason if you wanted to do that. Um, and subtract a D3 unit. That means the HQ unit, if it's a Psyker... No, even if it's not a Psyker. I'm sorry. If it, No, if it is a Psyker, we'll get a minimum of negative 4 from its leadership. So, you Eldrad players, sorry. Your Grey Knights, Drago especially, ouch. Greater demons, lesser demons, any type of psychic demon. Demon, uh, 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 you know, who else? Champions, demon princes, if any of them are psychic, ouch. Uh, they're going to have a really hard time. So, the D3 actually works on anybody. I'm just saying that if you add in Shadow of the Warp, you add an, e an extra negative 3 to it. So, anybody, even if you're an Ethereal, or even a Necron Lord, you're still going to get a D3 off of your leadership. Now, the other one is where the F is it? which has caused a lot of debate in the few games that I've that that it's come into play uh, mostly because many people don't even bother trying to shoot at the death leaper it's it's just so hard to hit which is a very very good thing about the death leaper the where the, the where is it basically says that you can only target the Death Leaper with weapons capable of making snap fire shots. Okay? Think about that. You can only target it. That doesn't mean they're all snapshot rolls, but they will be, but you can't even target it if you can't make a snapshot roll. Or the figure the model, the unit, the character isn't capable of making snapshot rolls. So you know what that means? That means no template weapons. That means no blast weapons. That means no ordnance weapons. You can't even target it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I, I, I'm waiting for some clarification on this, but I believe that also goes for uh, overwatching with with the wall of death uh, because we've been looking at it again 
and it just seems that if you can't target it, then you can't target it, and that would be including in in Overwatch. But we'll 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 straighten that out. So this means Death Leapers, which have stealth, are always going to be difficult to tough uh, to hit, and most of the time be in woods. The other good thing about them is, of course, you can put them in other Lictor units. So now you can have an Uber Lictor unit with four Lictors giving you very nice uh, extra Lookout Sir rolls for extra wounds if you're even able to shoot the Death Leaper. But most of the time, the Death Leaper should just be running around the battlefield, challenging various characters to get the extra two victory points for Mine Eater, which it gets as a default. It's also very good for throwing in with Gene Stealer units, also all infiltrating and outflanking, so that you can all start forward with Line Breaker as well for victory points. Um, and of course, as I stated in another video, Gene Stealers now, the Brood Lord is an upgrade. It's not a unit you buy. So every single Gene Stealer unit can upgrade to have a monstrous creature in it. Crazy, but true. Um, this is how I use them. Uh, one, to bring in lots of Lictors, just so that you can basically deep strike where you want. They're all teleport homers and they all don't deviate themselves. Or you can just start them in the game and then start trying to roll reserves on turn two. And as I said, there's lots of tricks to get your reserve rolls in. You can get the high the the swarm lord with a plus one to your uh, reserve rolls. And that's not a warlord trait, so you don't have to worry about conflicting with mine eater. And additionally you can get the Aegis Defense Line, which is excellent in and of itself for the Death Leaper and Lictors for providing cover, and upgrade to a Communications Array, which allows you to re-roll failed reserve rolls. Combining all of this, you have a very competitive, entirely infiltrating, outflanking army, and I think that's just incredibly. Uh, it's deadly, it's versatile, uh, the, the Brood Lord comes with the Horror, which is a Malediction Psychic Attack, to force a pinning roll on a unit within 18 inches at negative 2 leadership. Uh, and for all you Psychers out there, you get somebody in there with Shadow of the Warp, and guess what? Oh, and of course, let's, let's also include that It's After Me is still in effect, so... Uh, you combine that together with the Gene Stealers and those choice HQ, incredibly point expensive, I win leaf blower units that people like to build, will find themselves either constantly locked down or constantly in challenges. And don't forget, lictors cause fear. So anybody planning on charging them or in hand to hand with them is still making that fear roll every round especially with the HQ unit is going to be down by a D3 leadership still going to be having to make those fear rolls it's very painful very painful for if you're playing a, a challenge army I like it that's what I play them with. That's how I use them. I, I just, I, I think I, in one of the games I tried to make a, a Gene Stealer Lictor heavy army uh, with the Death Leaper as the Warlord. They just all started halfway up. In fact, you don't even care where your deployment zone is because you're coming in, uh, you're outflanking, you're deep striking, you're infiltrating. You just don't care. You don't. You don't even care what the scenario is because there's 15 other different ways to get victory points. Uh, and then, of course, at the very end, uh, don't forget Gene Stealers are a scoring troop choice unit. Um, so keep them in outflanking. Keep them coming through Turvagon tunnels. 
and it's 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 pretty easy to take table corners. At least one or two other victory points for that. In in the few games that I've played with them, uh, granted these against people who are still learning the Tyranid Sixth Edition rules too. I'm usually ending up with at least three for killing their their warlord. Uh, or the warlord spends the entire game declining challenges and running away from me, which puts the entire army at a disadvantage otherwise. And I'm then usually killing some other character. But at least one character is going to die to the Death Leaper, and that's two victory points. One, If it's not the warlord, it's somebody else. That's how I've been using the Death Leaper. I hope you like those ideas. I hope you keep watching the videos. I hope to see more Tyranid players out there saying, yes, I'm kicking everybody's ass. And, and as ever, keep watching and keep enjoying these videos. Thank you.